Good afternoon, Colonel K, Sergeant Major Zoker, Major Payne, Major Darden, Captain Washington, and other distinguished guests. I'm Chief Warrant Officer Walker, Ammunition Warrant Officer for the 40, 41st uh, Field Artillery Brigade. Today we're going to discuss the 41st FAB Support Operations um, Ammunition Resupply and Capability Proposal. Next slide. The overview. We're going to discuss the problem statement, SPO logistics solutions, solution implementation, and solution evaluations. Our team has conducted thorough research, gathered analytical data in both a qualitative and quantitative um, uh, manner, and it certainly supports our uh, problem statement and problem solution as we'll discuss further in, in the presentation. Next slide. The problem statement. Currently, there are not enough organic load handling systems or LHSs uh, with trailers and forklifts to support the ammunition logistical requirements within the brigade, internal to our brigade. Uh, currently, we have to rely on 21st TSC and 16th Sustainable Brigade assets to support a continued firing rate um, of approximately six rockets per minute. Um, and with the delivery of anywhere from 48 to 62 pods, um, you can see that with sustained fire, uh, we would have an issue with resupplying the, the rockets with only the, the current three vehicles or trailers that we have within the ATHP section. The problem presented severely inhib inhibits resupply of rockets of eight different variants, uh, small arms, dem demolition materials, water, and food. It creates a dependence on other units within the European theater that could otherwise be used elsewhere for uh, sustained operations, not targeting a specific uh, unit like ourselves. Uh, next slide. As you can see here, the current logistical uh, capability uh, within our BSB um, shows that we lack the M985 uh, HEMAT with trailer. We only have three PLS, PLS systems with the trailer. We have uh, one fueler truck uh, which creates a huge problem with uh, liquid logistics to supply the, uh, the HIMAR units that fire the rockets as well as the FSCs uh, and, the, and the HHB uh, vehicles. Uh, currently that's only about 2,500 gallons that we can support the entire brigade with and we need uh, approximately uh, 10,000 gallons to support sustained operations. Uh, we also only have one uh, record one record to support the entire BSB and HHB, um, which as you know can present problems as well with maintenance capabilities and recovery operations. We also lack uh, th about three forklifts. If I'm going to set up an ATHP and create a, a holding area for all these munitions and be able to load them onto the trucks, uh, the current capability is only two and uh, with a good driver, a driver that, that has been trained extensively, we can load one pod in about 10 to 15 minutes, and we need about eight pods per truck and trailer, so you can see how that would be time consuming with how slow we need to use each forklift. We also lack a maintenance company. The maintenance company, uh, currently we only have one platoon. The maintenance company uh, will better it will better, for lack of a word, uh, support the incoming uh, vehicles that we are proposing um, and avoid our maintenance capability from being stretched thin across a vast area of space in the, in the BSA, the Brigade Support Area. Um, we also do not have a, uh, a medical entity. Currently, we only have um, a, physician, a physician's assistant as well as uh, five medics for an entire brigade, a brigade of approximately 2,000 soldiers. The BSB's current asset authorizations are not in keeping with the mission set. The lack of authorizations creates a problem uh, for safety uh, for supply, excuse me, distribution processes and forces the 16th Sustainment Brigade and 21st TSC uh, to practice what we call throughput uh, distribution. And the throughput distribution is going to bypass my team um, within the BSA and take uh, logistic logistical supplies directly to the forward line of troops. 
Um, this will inhibit uh, supply operations to uh, sustain and frequent resupply missions um, because of the distance traveled between the CSA, the core support area, bypassing the BSA and taking it directly to uh, the forward line of troops. If we were able to practice supply distribution, we could take those incremental steps and do what we call turn and burns where 16th Sustainment Brigade would bring us the supplies uh, to the BSA and then in turn we could deliver forward uh, to uh, the combat units. This will greatly aid the efficiency and the frequency in which we could resupply the units. Pending any questions, we'll move to the next slide. All right. In this chart, um, again, we go over our number of authorized vehicles and personnel within the brigade, and then our proposed numbers. You can see that we've added 16 M985 uh, and HEMAT trailers. We've added three additional PLS and trailers, an additional 11 uh, fuelers, uh, an additional three wreckers, and additional two forklifts. Um, I would like five forklifts, but what's practical is, is for uh, given the amount of operating space that we would have in the ATHP. I know earlier I discussed five. Uh, the maintenance company, uh, currently we have a platoon. We would like to increase by nearly uh, triple um, to, to create three platoons, which would in, in turn make a company, uh, and then an entire medical company to support uh, uh, the brigade. The solution that has been determined to be most preferable and most cost effective in the long run um, is to request the above number of personnel platforms through the Army requisitions process. We have identified the timeline to be completed no later than March 2021 uh, and a budget no greater than $10 million and uh, also keeping stakeholders informed throughout the entire process. Pending any questions, we'll move to the next slide. Okay. Here uh, we show uh, two charts, two charts of the current and proposed authorizations uh, just to give a visual representation of what we currently have and what we are proposing, as well as the percentage increase. We can see that with the medical company, the maintenance company, and the forklifts, those are the greatest percentage increases, nearly 8,000% at its highest. Um, but what's, what's more significant to me as the ammunition uh, uh, warrant officer is the capability increases that are still astronomical, uh, you know, in the, in the thousands uh, percent to uh, uh, increase the capability within the ATHP section to, to move supplies forward. Um, it as indicated uh, with these charts, a clear need uh, for additional resources consisting of equipment and personnel is needed as we take note of the drastic percentage increases. The increases were determined by examining similar unit support structures as well as determining firing rates from the rocket batteries during sustained uh, operations and uh, our current refillability. Um, the quantitative data was gathered uh, through means of uh, taking similar units, uh, supply capabilities, as well as what we've determined as the firing rate uh, in, in the theater of operations. Pending any questions, we'll move to the next slide. Okay. Implementation. Topics we'll cover are timeline established, the budget, consistent action research, and stakeholder engagement. The timeline set forth for the project end and full imp implementation is March of 2021. Plan proposal and supporting data are due to the CSA Chief of Staff of the Army, who is in the what we call the Board of Directors, or the equivalent rather, uh, no later than January of 2021, in order to uh, prepare the House of Representatives for allocation proposal. Um, the CEO or the Brigade Commander will uh, deliver data and brief the CASCOM and the Combined Arms Support Command General as well as the Fire Center of Excellence General um, uh, no later than September of 2020. This will give the generals and staff ample time to research the data that we provided, as well as 
war game and, and present the data uh, to the chief of staff of the army. All right. Pardon me. All right, the budget is set for $10 million. Um, this is considering new equipment fielding and not anything that's refurbished, um, depending what the, what the assets throughout the Army uh, are available, what, what assets are available. Um, the project team will come under budget by seeking refurbished vehicles. We're going to fabricate parts, uh, seek refurbishment, seek additional parts that may be cheaper than ordering new in order to come under the budget. Um, and we will be utilizing as much space in the motor pools, in the current buildings that we have, um, to fit as much equipment and personnel as possible so that we don't have to purchase uh, any more land from the German, uh, the German government, essentially, in the surrounding areas of the installation. Moving on with more notes. Consistent action research will be uh, will allow for a fluid operation and provide flexible solutions. Um, this practice will also afford real-time feedback uh, from customers and progress reporting through the stakeholder chain. And I mean from Major Darden yourself through Colonel K to the CASCOM and FCO uh, commanding generals as well as to the chief of staff of the Army. So as long as we're continuing to receive their feedback uh, the technical data that we provide them um, and, and essentially analyze that data as we go, we can, we can call that uh, action research as, as we go along. Last note, it is uh, important to maintain proper communication and assurance at the designated times uh, throughout the project timeline with stakeholders. Um, the House of Representatives uh, will be the, uh, as far as uh, the timeline goes, we will invest um, our focus on them near project end um, as they have high influence and hopefully high support, but as of right now, we're going to call it neutral support. Um, we need to engage the Chief of Staff of the Army on a quarterly basis as well as uh, the German population, surrounding areas uh, to, to get their buy-in as well. And with the CASCOM and EFCO commanders, um, We've identified them as, as high uh, influence and possibly negative support, so we need to gauge, engage them at least on a monthly basis, and, and we would ask you, Colonel K, to engage on our behalf, um, and we want to sustain our engagements with you um, at least on a bi-weekly basis. Uh, pending any questions, we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Solution evaluation. We're going to talk about budget adherence, unresolved issues, and customer feedback. Uh, the budget adherence, uh, success will be measured in the fielding of equipment by March and not exceeding 95% of the budget. I already talked about trying to save money through um, fabrication and refurbished means, but it's our job, our duty as American soldiers to uh, do right by the Amer American public um, and be fiscally responsible, um, whether that's the Congress approving uh, new funds or, in this case, uh, uh, redistributing allocated funds or funds that have already been appropriated um, by the October uh, 2021 uh, fiscal year uh, budget proposal. The team must complete the project with fewer than four unresolved issues. These issues range from funding, timelines, additional physical space required for the project, and finally, European relations that involve assimilation um, and coordination between U.S. units and local communities. Uh, one of the biggest complaints that we've had um, in the two years that I've been here is that uh, U.S. citizens don't necessarily uh, abide by the German laws. Um, and, and that's a generalistic term. We all know that we try our best to assimilate, um, but we're definitely going to have some unresolved issues there, and I, well, potential unresolved issues, and I'd like to keep those at a minimum. And I think it's important to uh, win the support of the European population.
And of course, customer uh, feedback. This is the team's most sought after method of solution evaluation. The FSCs and ATHP section will run drills, <coughs> excuse me, in time, uh, current capabilities uh, versus proposed implementation. We will evaluate success based on this criteria with the most emphasis. So what I mean by the drills, we're gonna take what we have currently, establish an ATHP section, and we have training pods. So what we'll do is we'll get our best forklift operators, we'll stage these pods on the three platforms that we currently have, and we'll time it. We'll time the time that it takes, we'll time the, uh, or measure the time that it takes to load the platforms, and we will base uh, delivery on a 25 kilometer um, uh, distance to deliver, and we will do that with also, <clears throat> come March of 2021, we will run the same drill and uh, time those events as well and uh, request customer feedback. Um, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to uh, succeed and, and these drills will prove um, effective and uh, we will continue to seek the support of the FSCs and the firing batteries. Pending any questions, uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. So, the summary. I'm gonna restate the problem statement. Currently, there are not enough organic load handling systems, or LHSs, uh, with trailers and forklifts to support the ammunition logistical requirements within the brigade. Um, We've touched on uh, the areas in which uh, we can improve and generate solutions, um, as well as uh, implement the solutions and evaluate the solutions. Um, pending any comments or questions, this concludes my brief.